Do Mormon temples have anything at all to do with the temple in the Bible? I believe if a person takes a closer look at what the Bible says about the temple, it would be very easy for any person to see that Mormon temples today have absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with the temple of the Bible. If you look through the Old Testament of the Bible, you find that Jacob's sons um, became what was called the nation of Israel in the Bible. They went into Egypt because of famine and were there and eventually became prisoners of the Egyptians, basically, or slaves, and lived in Egypt for about 400 years. After that 400 years, God pulled them out. He used Moses to do that. And Moses in the Bible went up and got the Ten Commandments from God and received instructions to build a tabernacle and also instructions to build an ark out of wood called the Ark of the Covenant. And this ark was overlaid with gold and inside the ark eventually were placed the Ten Commandments which God had given along with the rod that budded which was a rod where God had separated between the tribes of Israel. Every tribe had brought a rod to Moses, and overnight these sticks, one of the twelve sticks that were brought to Moses, budded, blossomed, brought forth almonds all in one night. And God used this as a sign that he very definitely had chosen the tribe of Aaron to be his official priests, the Aaronic priests. Mormonism tries to clone that with their Aaronic priesthood. The main point of the law and the Ark of the Covenant and the tabernacle, Moses had made a tabernacle, they had a tent of meeting and, and a tabernacle that they set up anywhere they traveled in the wilderness. And the Ark of the Covenant went before the people any time they moved, because this specially came to represent the presence of God with them. So the Ark of the Covenant, even before the temple, was um, used in what was called the Holy of Holies, even before the temple in the tabernacle. And the priests, the high priest only, one time a year would go into the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was and one time every year had to sprinkle blood on this Ark of the Covenant. And this would atone for the year for the sins of the nation of Israel. This would give them a temporary covering for their sins. Jesus ultimately did away with sin with his sacrifice. The Bible very clearly teaches that only the shedding of blood can take away sins. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So the Ark of the Covenant was the place where blood was offered officially one time per year. There were other sacrifices, of course, made year-round for sin and for different types of offerings to God. But one time in a year, the high priest was to enter in to the Holy of Holies and sprinkle blood on the Ark of the Covenant. And of course, above the Ark of the Covenant, there was the mercy seat. And this was a special place where I believe God's presence was supposed to especially be right there. Later on, of course, there w the temple was built and the temple had a Holy of Holies. And the Ark of the Covenant was moved into the temple's Holy of Holies, and the tabernacle was no longer needed. Um, but there ever only was, and ever only could be, one temple. And one of the big reasons why there could only be one temple, I believe, is this Ark of the Covenant. There only ever was one Ark of the Covenant, and there only ever will be one Ark of the Covenant. But this is one of the things that totally takes Mormonism and their temples and and just makes it a laughing stock, really, compared to what the Bible teaches about the temple. Because Mormonism would claim that, you know, well, we've got the temples and, and that means we're the only true church because you've got to have temples. 
But meanwhile, the Bible in the New Testament actually declares that we are now the temple of God. There's no need at all for a temple for those that believe in God right now, because God indwells us. We're where God dwells. Solomon prayed when he dedicated the temple that God would pay very special attention to any prayer that was even prayed toward the temple that they had built for God. And he prayed that God would pay special attention to those prayers and that he would answer those prayers. But the whole purpose of the temple in the Old Testament and the whole purpose of the Holy of Holies was a very special place where sacrifice was made to remove sin. It didn't really remove it in the temple, but it temporarily covered it and showed the promise, basically, that God was making that he was going to take care of sin, but it was going to come through the shedding of blood. <laughs> and it came when God came to earth as their Messiah, who they rejected, for now, will accept in the future, the Bible clearly says, you know, for the temporary time, the Jews have rejected Christ. Some of them have already accepted. Some still reject. In the last days, I believe God will specifically deal directly with the Jews again. And they will finally accept and realize that Jesus was their Messiah. It's very interesting that their own prophet, Isaiah, in chapter 53 very clearly detailed and spelled out for them that when their Messiah would appear, that there would be no beauty that they'd desire him, that they would esteem him accursed of God and rejected. But yet he says that the same one was bruised for their iniquities, he was crushed for their transgressions. It talks about his blood removing their sins, his stripes healing them. And this is scripture in even the Jewish scriptures today. But the Jews don't see, because for the time being, God has temporarily blinded most of the Jews. In the last days, the blinders will be lifted, and they'll see that their Messiah has come. They'll accept Jesus as who he is, and Jesus won't return until the Jewish people realize that he was their Messiah. And as he returns, they'll be saying, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, the Bible indicates. Um... But if you look at the Mormon temples today versus the temple of the Bible, in the Mormon temples today they do what they call baptisms for the dead and then temple marriages. Jesus very clearly in Matthew chapter 20, I believe it is, spelled out that marriage is not eternal. There is no marriage or giving in marriage in heaven. It doesn't exist. People are given in marriage on earth and it ends in heaven. Um... The Bible, I believe, very clearly teaches there's two families in eternity, those who are of God, those who become the children of God by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, will all be part of his family, the family of God, in heaven. Um, and I believe that Jesus clearly taught to some of the very religious Jews even. He told them, you are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. I believe there will be a family in hell, those who proceed and do things the way that the devil did, those who go the way of the devil and reject God and set themselves up as being God. They'll be in hell. I don't know that there'll be a united family in hell at all. There, it could be total isolation. I don't know. But there will be basically two different places where people go, and they'll be forever in heaven with God or in hell away from God. So the temple in the Bible was used for one thing. It was a special place to make sacrifices for sins. Very few people could ever enter into the temple at all, and only one person could enter into the Holy of Holies, and that was only one time per year that the high priest, whoever was the high priest, would enter in one time a year to offer sacrifice for sin. It was required to do that once a year and could not be done more than one time a year. And, of course, every Mormon temple has what they call the Holy of Holies, and there it's basically this little cloth or whatever that they pull you through and play like you've gone into heaven if you get pulled into the Holy of Holies. And, I mean, there's absolutely nothing in common with the temple of the 
Old Testament of the Bible. And of course, no Mormon temple could possibly have an Ark of the Covenant in it. First of all, there only ever has been one. And secondly, no person on earth today has shown pictures, at least publicly, and declared to the world, you know, that here it is. With the whole Ark of the Covenant thing, this, I believe, is a very, very powerful evidence for why Mormon temples couldn't possibly have anything to do with the Temple of the Bible, and why there should only be one temple. There only ever was one temple, and it possessed the Ark of the Covenant, and the Ark of the Covenant was in the Holy of Holies. If you entered in the Holy of Holies, that is all that you would have saw, really. From one wall to the other stretched the Ark of the Covenant, or the wings of the cherubim that were over the Ark of the Covenant, and over the mercy seat. So, that was the whole focal point, the whole sender of the Holy of Holies, but no man other than the high priest, and him only one time per year, ever went into the Holy of Holies. In the Mormon temples, people go in every day by the thousands, I'm sure, around the world, into what they call their Holy of Holies, and it has nothing to do with sacrifices to God or anything else. It has to do with being married either for themselves or for dead people. Because that's what Mormons do in their temples. They do baptisms for the dead or they do marriages for themselves or marriages for dead people. You know, it's interesting to me. God said all those who hate me love death. And Mormonism is fascinated with dead people and the dead. You know, um, I certainly wouldn't call all Mormons haters of God. I think most Mormons desire God in some ways, at least. Um, at least some Mormons. I believe a lot of Mormons are just very sincerely deceived. They literally believe Mormonism is really true, as most people believe their current belief system is true. But it's total fraud and lies, you know, um... And like I said, God said in the Bible, all those who hate me love death. Mormonism is very fascinated with death. It's interesting to look at all the different things in the world. We've got so many movies that are extremely fascinated with death. People love these horror movies, going to see people killed and murdered. Got so many video games that center around death. We've all kinds of different religions. I mean, Islam. People go and kill themselves to kill other people who they call infidels, you know. I mean, the fascination with death all around our music, heavy metal music especially, which I used to be very much into, focuses very much on a lot of death. They even have a special type of heavy metal music called death metal, you know. Oh, and the Mormon Church today claims that they've got well over 130 temples, and I think it may be approaching more closer to 150 temples from videos I've been watching. But, you know, the number of temples, they actually would like to use that as a, as a good thing, as a thing that proves that they're somehow true. But if a person takes a closer look in the Bible and sees what the temple is all about, it's all a total hoax. It's a waste of time. They're spending lots of money and lots of time, and the more money and time they spend, the more brainwashed believers in Mormonism get into the whole Mormon thing, thinking surely they're not spending all these countless hours and countless billions of dollars on doing stuff for dead people that's going to have no effect. But if you look at any false religion, that's what happens. People spend countless hours and countless amounts of money doing things that have no purpose and no worth whatsoever. The Bible's pretty clear. The only thing that matters at all in the end is whether or not we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. If we do, we'll be with him in heaven forever. If we don't, we'll be in hell forever. The wrath of God abides on us if we don't have Christ in our hearts. The Bible says, if we have the Son, we have life. Those that have the Son have life. Those that don't have the Son, the wrath of God abides on them. John chapter 3, verses 18 and 36. But anyway, thank you for your time.